right, well, today is the third sermon in this series based off the book Half Truths by Adam Hamilton. We've been discussing this book in our um, Sunday school classes, and we still have a couple more, so if you're interested in being part of that discussion, feel free for the next couple of Sundays to come join one of the three adult classes that we're having right now. Um, we have been dealing with some pretty challenging phrases that sound good on the surface, they sound true, but they're kind of half true because when we start exploring a little deeper, we find out that they um, have some weaknesses and some, some issues. We have a couple more left. I want to give you a, a preview just to give you a reason to come back the next couple Sundays. Uh, next week, we're going to talk about the phrase that we often hear where people say, God said it, I believe it, and that settles it. So we're going to explore that one a little bit. And then the week after that is another common phrase that we should love the sinner but hate the sin. And we're going to explore why that's also a troubling um, concept that we often say. All right, so with that, let's take a moment to have a word of prayer. Gracious God, we receive the gift of your word today with open ears and with grateful hearts. May your word renew our minds and shape our lives. Amen. Oh, I, I know you're going through a tough time right now. Yeah, it's, it's terrible. I hear you. Yeah, it's just so unfair. It, just, it feels like you're drowning. Like it's just too much of a burden to bear. But you know, you really shouldn't feel that way. Because God will never give you more than you can handle. How does that sound when you hear me say those words? It, it's intended to be comforting. But it sounds a little condescending, right? You, you really shouldn't feel that way. You know, it's not too much for you to, to bear because God wouldn't do that to you. I can honestly say I have never said that statement that God won't give you more than you can handle. And the reason I've never said it is because I, I know it's a half-truth. I know it's a difficult sentence. And I know that from my own experience of having cancer as a young man. When I had cancer, I felt overwhelmed. I had more than I could handle. And I felt lost and confused and scared. And I needed help. I didn't need someone to just tell me, oh, you can handle it. I couldn't handle it. I endured and I survived and I actually even thrived because of the people who helped me in the difficult times. The doctors and the nurses, my family, my friends, believers who prayed for me, people who provided me with cards and with food and with gifts, with their companionship, and even more importantly, people who, who gave me hope when I couldn't handle it by myself. Cancer was more than I could handle alone, right? Alone. That's the key here. And praise the Lord, I was not alone. I'm so thankful for that. God surrounded me with angels who cared for me when I could not handle it myself. And I don't believe God gave me cancer. God didn't give me cancer. So God, God doesn't give us more than we can handle because God doesn't give us things like cancer. I, I just don't believe that. God doesn't give us pain and suffering. But God will help us handle what life has given to us. Now, I know that can be a, a challenging statement. Actually, Dean Schoengert and I were just discussing this before church. It can be hard to understand, well, if God isn't part of, uh, how, do, uh, how do these things happen if God's not in control of all these things? And really, the answer to that is that God is mysterious. There's not a way for me to tell you why things happen or to give you reasons. Um, and so it's challenging. Theologically, that's a, that's a tough nut to crack. It's hard to get into. But this is what I do now. Scripture is very, very clear that in the face of suffering and loss and problems, that God is the source of our strength and our comfort, that God is the source of our healing and our hope. And there are many powerful Scripture passages I can lift up to share that good news with you. And I'm going to lift up just a few of my favorite, and I hope you hear a powerful word from the Lord through these words. The first one is in Isaiah 40. Love this passage. But those who wait for the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. And in Isaiah 43. But now thus says the Lord, He who created you, do not fear, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by name, and you are mine. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. 
and through the rivers they shall not overwhelm you. And when you walk through the fire, you shall not be burned, and the flame shall not consume you. For I am the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, your Savior, and because you are precious in my sight and honored, and I love you, do not fear, for I am with you. Just love that. It's just so beautiful. A couple more passages that I turn to for comfort and strength. Psalm 23. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. And Psalm 46. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear, though the earth should change and though the mountains shake in the heart of the sea. And then finally, a couple from the New Testament. In 1 Peter, it says, Cast all your anxieties on God, because God cares for you. And finally, in Matthew, Jesus taught, Come to me, all you who are weary and are carrying heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. God will give us rest. God is there for us. These, these are rock-solid promises that we can believe in and we can build our lives on knowing that God will be with us and God will help us through whatever we have to handle. The truth is, is that sometimes our pain and our problems are more than we can handle by ourselves. <coughs> sometimes we do feel overwhelmed and we don't really need someone to kind of brush us off with a trite statement like, it's okay, don't feel that way. God won't give you more than you can handle. It's, it's just not helpful. It, it actually makes you feel bad. Um, and the thing is, what we really need from others is just help. When we're saying, I can't handle this, I need help, we need help. Paul tells us in his letter to the Galatians, he reminds the people there in the church, bear one another's burdens, and in this way, you will fulfill the law of Christ. It's such a simple concept, but I think this is so profound. We are all companions in Christ. The people who are in your life, everyone who's in your life, your family, your neighbors, your co-workers, your church family, everyone you know has been given to you as a gift to take care of. And relieving the suffering of others, that's what gives life meaning and purpose. If you're trying to figure out what the meaning and purpose of life is, help people. That's why we're here, to share our lives and to get through life together. There is no greater love than to bear the burdens of your family and friends. Will you join me in a word of prayer? Oh God, how grateful we are for the way you walk with us in every moment of our lives. In those moments when we're tempted and tested, help us remember that we can resist and that you make a way out of temptation. You give us the strength we need when we turn to you. Lead us not into temptation as we would go, but in your path away from evil. When we walk through difficulties and when we walk through adversities, Lord, help us to remember that these burdens did not come from you, but that you have said you would help us bear them. Thank you for the people who come along our path and help carry us through those challenging times. Help us have eyes to see those around us who need your help and to see how we might be instruments of your help for them. How grateful we are, O oh God, that you are our refuge and strength and ever-present help in times of trouble. And so therefore, we will not fear, even when our world seems to be falling apart all around us. Amen.